So you think you want a service dog. <laughs> I'm going to tell you how to get a service dog right now. I'm asked a lot of times, how do I get a service dog? How can I make my dog a service dog? How can I get my dog to be registered as a service dog? Different things like that. Obviously, if you're a service dog handler, you know you get the questions too. So I just wanted to come in and explain to you guys how to actually go about it and make it be legal and legit. You have to actually be disabled. So there's a lot of different types of disabilities that will qualify you for a service dog. I'm gonna list a few. So of course, there are psychiatric things like PTSD, bipolar, different things like that you know obviously physical disabilities would be just an umbrella term there are other types of disabilities like diabetic <gasps> she used her mama I love you in a row oh I love you come here <laughs> come here oh I hope you guys heard that that was so sweet here I'm gonna turn this sorry that is not what this video was she's over there with her little buttons Aww. Okay, so there's a lot of different disabilities, um, like obviously blindness, deafness, being diabetic, things to do with your heart. There's a lot of different things. Obviously, there's much more than what I'm mentioning. I'm just trying to give you guys a, a general idea of a lot of different things that you could have happening for you to qualify for a service dog. So once you establish that, hey, I have something going on, then you need to figure out if a dog would actually be able to help you. So if you are a person who has diabetes but is under control and like you're not having crazy spikes without being able to control it, you know, I'm not a doctor obviously, but you probably are not gonna, you're probably not even gonna wanna take a service dog around with you. So that would probably be just the first thing. Um, but if you're a person who is, I get really depressed and you know, sometimes I cry, that's not gonna qualify. So your daughter is not gonna, Go there with you so it has to be something that is preventing you from living a normal life or a you know as normal life as possible so and it has to be something that a dog would be able to actually help you with so what that means is the dog would be able to like i said for we'll use diabetes because that's something i feel like people are everyone kind of knows what diabetes is so you know, your blood sugar would change and your dog is gonna notice that you have a spike or a drop in your blood sugar and let you know so that you can take action before it actually affects you. Like I said, there's a ton of things, so we're not gonna go into all the different things. But once you determine that you do have something that a service dog can help you with, then you need to talk to your doctor. You might have a doctor who's great and who totally is familiar with how they work and, you know, is on board from the get-go. But, you know, there's a 50-50 shot, I guess. So what I would suggest, and like I said, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical professional of any type, but what I would suggest you do is if you think you want a service dog and you think that might be something that would fit your circumstances and actually help you to live a better life, come up with some reasons that you think that would be good for you. And then whenever you talk to your doctor, talk to them like that and say, hey, I've been thinking about getting a service dog. How, you know, they have to be on board with you. So you can't just be like, I'm thinking about it, here we go. Like they have to actually comply with you here. Have some ideas in mind, like have some ways that you think the dog could help you. These are called service dog tasks. So you can figure out what task your dog could perform for you that would actually help you to you know, live a normal life or live a better life than what you are currently living now. And this can't just be um, my dogs with me for emotional support. Emotional support animals are not service dogs. They do not have public access rights. Emotional support animals do have housing rights and I'm pretty sure they have airplane access. So that is the only thing that it emotional support animal has that a regular dog or cat does not have. If you feel like you need something with you 24 seven, that is a service dog. And it's very important that you follow the proper things to actually make sure that you are having a service dog for the right reason and also going about it in the right way. So you need to make sure you're actually following the proper laws. It is actually a crime to fake a service dog. So if you have a dog and you're like, hey, you know, I'm gonna pretend I have a service dog, that's illegal. You can't do that. You just wanna make sure you're following the proper guidelines. Talk to your doctor, get them to write you a prescription, all of that stuff. I guess this will kind of be before you talk to your doctor, you need to decide if it's actually right for you. Having a service dog is a lot like having a toddler with you all the time. It's great, they're super helpful, but they're also a living being and you have to take care of them. So whenever you go out with your service dog, I'll just use me and Farabee for an example, obviously. That's the best example I have. If you have a service dog and you wanna to go to the store, you have to think a few steps ahead here. So it's not just as simple as, oh, I have a service dog, I'm gonna to go to the grocery store, let's go. 
you have to make sure they've gone to the bathroom. If they haven't gone to the bathroom, you have to wait for them to go to the bathroom. You kind of have to work around like what their body does. Like I know Fairby goes to the bathroom at certain times of the day, so we schedule our outings around that so that I'm sure she's not gonna have an accident because you don't want your dog to crap in the middle of the grocery store. Obviously you don't want that to happen. There's no reason that should happen. But whenever you have a service dog, you have to schedule everything around them. So, you know, like I said, make sure they've gone to the bathroom. If they haven't gone, well, you can't go anywhere. Now you're stuck waiting for them to go to the bathroom. You have to remember that they're living, breathing beings. So you can't just go like 12 hours and go, you know, do a ton of stuff. Your dog's gonna need a break. Your dog's gonna need to have food, water, bathroom breaks. They're gonna wanna play at some point. And obviously it's not fun just to work all the time. Like no one wants to just work all the time. And that's what your dog is doing when they're with you. They might enjoy going places. Fairby loves to go places, but there's a certain point where she's done. And just like a child, she starts getting whiny or restless or whatever. And it's basically like, okay, it's done. I'm done, we've gotta go. A good example of this, I'll link a video up here for you guys, was whenever we went to a restaurant the other day. We had gone to two or three places before and then we went to a restaurant at the restaurant about the time that I was almost getting done eating, but I wasn't quite ready to go yet. She was getting restless, wanting to get up. She was whining a little bit. I knew that she was getting tired because we'd also done something the night before. So that's just an example. You also have to consider, is it hot out? You know, you need to bring a cooling mat, a cooling vest, shoes sunglasses, all that stuff, is it cold out? So then they have to have, once again, shoes, a warm jacket or a vest or something that's warm, their gear, um, you know, all kinds of fun things. She's, <laughs> she's like, all kinds of stuff, mom. So you have to have all kinds of things for them. It's not just as simple as putting a, a collar on your dog and a vest and going. Uh, you also have to make sure you're constantly training. So even if your dog is trained, which you know your dog will be trained at some point if you go through a program or train themselves. Whatever you do, whatever way you train your dog, you still have to constantly train. If you see people on YouTube, their dog's like five years old, been doing this their whole life, they still call it training because it is. It's constantly, you're just, I guess we'll say echoing you know, their training. Like you're doing the same thing over and over and over and just making sure they get it so whenever they do need to alert you to something, they are focused on you and they're actually doing what they're supposed to do and they're paying attention and you know you know their tasks are still solid. So it's a forever thing. It's not just one day you're just magically done training. Like it's forever. So it's still important no matter how old your dog is, no matter how long you've had your service dog to make sure that you're still working with them on training. So that's something to consider. You know, like I said, it's like having a toddler with you all the time. Another thing, if your dog gets diarrhea, and you have big, big plans, guess what? Your plans are canceled <laughs> because your dog is gonna crap somewhere they're not supposed to. And it's not your dog's fault. It doesn't mean they're not trained. It just means that something happened and they have an upset stomach. And if they're having stuff come out one end or the other, you can't take them in public. So, you know, you, you have to change your plans. Like I said, all of that to consider if a service dog is even right for you. And then like I said, also make sure you talk to your doctor. Also make sure that you're going through the proper channels to get a service dog. But any breed can be a service dog. So that's another question that people have a lot of times. So yes, any breed can be a service dog, but not every dog can be a service dog because there's a lot to do with temperament that you need to worry about. And if you want to get a dog and you don't want to send them to a program or get a program dog, so you can have a behaviorist go with you to actually pick out a dog. This is gonna cost you some money, but it's a really good way to help you actually get a dog that will work for you if you're not getting from a breeder who actually breeds service dogs. So that is, a bunch of information that I've just thrown at you. I think that's everything I can think of on the topic. If I've left anything out or if you have any additional questions, definitely leave them below. If you are a service dog handler and you have any additional information that you think people should know, leave it below too. I really appreciate you know you guys like coming together and leaving feedback. That's awesome. And I'm gonna link a subscribe button up here. If you guys have enjoyed this, please subscribe to our channel. We're trying to grow. I like to spread positive service dog content. Also, I'll link some videos. I'll link a service dog training playlist here and something just for you right here. Bye guys. <laughs>